Hello friends, in this video, we are going to see a method in which we are going to apply a propulsion theorem in a circuit consisting of dependent as well as independent sources. So we will see the method how to apply solution theorem with a circuit consisting of dependent sources through this numerical. So thing is that whenever there is a dependent source present along with the independent sources, the method is slightly different than that of a problem with the only independent sources. So what you have to do? First thing, you have to list out number of independent sources present. So over here, there are two independent sources, 17 volt voltage source and one ampere current source. And what we are going to do? We are going to see the effect of this source is on the load resistance. Load resistance is nothing but that resistor through which we are supposed to get a current. So we want to get a current I flowing through 3 ohm. So 3 ohm is the load resistance for us. So we will see 17 volt is acting alone. So whenever we say 17 volt acting alone, you have to just concentrate on an independent source present other than the 17 volt and that source is 1 ampere over here. So I can say being a current source I will open circuit gate. So 1 ampere is open circuit gate and we know why we have to open circuit gate because the internal resistance is infinity for the current source. Similarly, effect of 1 ampere, whenever it is acting alone, we have to do the analysis. But at that time, the other independent source is a 17 volt, which is a voltage source. So being a voltage source, we will short circuit it. And we know the reason, the internal resistance is zero for the ideal voltage source. So 1 ampere acting alone at that time 17 volt is short circuited. Now comes the very important question. What about this 5VX which is a dependent voltage source? The thing is that whenever a dependent voltage source is given, we should not replace that voltage source with a short circuit or a, if it is a dependent current source with an open circuit because being a dependent voltage source, it does not have any internal resistance. So whenever internal resistance is not known, obviously we cannot replace that particular voltage or current source if it is dependent. So I can write a note. dependent sources should not be replaced by short circuit or current sorry or open circuit it will always be there in the circuit whether it is taken for a first analysis or for the second analysis so once again i will write here dependent sources should not be replaced by either short circuit or open circuit So let's analyze the circuit using supervision theorem. So first we'll consider a 17 volt acting alone. Once again, we have to just concentrate on 
other independent source for replacement either by short circuit or open circuit and over here other independent source is one ampere current source so we will open circuit it so we have made a modification to the original circuit so open circuit means you have to open this particular element if this word open obviously there is no significance of this four ohm because that is connected to open end so this entire branch will be removed from the circuit keeping this voltage source intact so we will get a circuit like this this is 5 vx this time we'll call this as a vx dash because being a removal of one of the branch certainly there will be effect on the voltage that they have given over here i'm talking about this voltage which is nothing but vx given but i will say it's a vx dash now do not forget we have to get this current and that current now will be i dash so it's a very simple one loop structure we will get and we'll pass a current through this let's say i and we will mark the voltage polarity because of this i across all the resistor present so plus minus over here see i have marked the polarity with a green and that is the polarity developed by r current and this is a polarity given in red it's different than that of the green one because green one is produced because of our current passing so i encircle the polarity given by them we should not concentrate on this for time being okay so let's apply kvl to this loop so what we'll get let's start with the voltage source plus minus minus 17 minus 3 the only current is i plus minus minus 5 vh dash plus minus concentrate on the green in polarity minus 2 i equal to 0 the only variable should be present is i but here vx dash is there so we need a substitution equation vx dash is nothing but a voltage across this 2 ohm that is simple ohms law 2 into i but we need to check the polarity so polarity given by them polarity obtained by us is mismatching hence it is minus 2 i so this is a substitution equation which we will put over here to get answer so after putting a substitution equation we will get minus 17 minus 3i minus 5 vx dash is minus 2i minus 2i equal to 0 so minus 3i plus simplify so minus 17 minus 3i plus 10i minus 2i equal to 0 so 5i equal to 17 and we will get the value of i as 3.4 ampere and this is the current direction so we will maintain the current direction given by them as it is so straight away we are getting the first answer i which i will say i dash so in the last part also you can put that as i dash no need to write over here you can keep i in the last step only we made i dash so this is analysis for the first source let's go to the second source now okay so second source is one ampere so one ampere is acting alone the remaining independent source is 17 volt so 17 volt being a voltage source we will short circuit it So what kind of a modification we will get? Here we will get a line as a short circuit. This will be intact and do not forget to 
mark this voltage source in the circuit. So equivalent circuit will look like this. So it's a short circuit, resistance and a current source will be there, resistor and source as we discussed we should not touch this so plus minus 5 vx double dash because second source we have considered 3 ohm this is 4 ohm 1 ampere this is 2 ohm and over here the polarity of the voltage will be like this which I will represent as Vx double dash. So let's encircle it so that we will verify it's given by them. And now do not forget we want this current I double dash this time. So here also we are going to apply a mesh axis. So I1 and I2. This give rise to a voltage drops in this manner plus minus plus minus plus minus plus minus now if you see carefully there is a current source present between two loops so that is forming a super mesh kind of a thing so before applying super mesh you have to write equation of current source so see upward direction is a current source given so equation of current source upward direction is a 1 ampere i1 and repeat upward direction 1 ampere current source is given i1 is flowing downward for this branch i2 is flowing upward so upward direction is matching with this i2 that means i2 current is dominating over i1 by amount 1 so i can say i2 minus i1 equal to 1 Let's write in the proper manner that means I1 term first and then I2. So we will get the equation as minus I1 plus I2 equal to 1 as equation number 1 to solve. And second equation we will get applied by applying a super mesh analysis. So apply KVA to super mesh. That is formation of mesh 1 and 2. So let's start from here plus minus minus 3 I2 plus minus minus 5 Vx double dash. Now you have to neglect this. Come over here plus minus green ink polarity minus 2 I1 and equal to 0. So we need a substitution for Vx double dash and the substitution equation over here will be One thing I would like to notify over here is that every time you have to treat this as a separate mesh analysis problem so that Coincidentally it may happen that the substitution equation is same, but sometimes it will be different So it is very very important. You have to treat this supervision problem as a combination of two mesh analysis problem all together different so over here also same logic vx double dash we will get as voltage across 2 ohm with a mesh matching polarity will get minus 2 i1 so if i substitute over here minus 2 i1 what we will get we will get a equation minus 3 i2 if i put a minus 2 i1 over here which will be 10 i1 minus 2 i1 equal to 0 so the equation we will get over here is 8 i1 minus 3 i2 equal to 0 equation number 2 upon solving equation 1 and 2 we will get a value for i1 and i2
Suppose solving equation 1 and 2, we will get I1 as 0.6 ampere and I2 as 1.6 ampere. Remember, we want I double dash, which is same as the I2. So I can say I double dash is same as I2 equal to 1.6 ampere and direction is this way. Now, my supervision theory, I dash and I double dash, we have to add. So both the currents are in the same direction that is from left to right. So I can say the total current I plus I dash plus I double dash, which is nothing but 5 ampere. And the direction is this way. So this is the final answer. So what we have seen over here, whenever there is a dependent source present, we should not replace that dependent source. Only thing is that the way we have solved for independent sources, methodology is same, but we have to keep intact the dependent source in the circuit. And we have to take this as a separate problem for mesh analysis. So basically a combination of two mesh analysis problems will give you a solution theorem because there were two independent sources. I hope you have understood the problem. Thank you.